The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Rochester, Dennis Day, Bob Crosby, and yours truly, Don Wilson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to bring you that... Hold it, hold it, Don. Jack isn't here. Well, gee, I just saw him a few minutes ago. Where is he? He just went in the other room to talk to his riders. Oh, boy, is Jack burned up. Oh, well, boy, those two guys get away with murder. They never have a program written till the last minute. Well, I'm going in and see what's happening. Gee, he's always having trouble with his riders. Now, look, fellas. If I told you once, I told you a thousand times. You've got to have the program written before we go on the air. <laughs> Every week, we just barely make it. Now today, look what happens. No script at all. Well, we were stuck this week. Yeah, we didn't have no inspiration. <laughs> oh, you didn't. Don't yell at me, I'll fly to pieces. <laughs> I'm not yelling. I'm just asking you to work. That's all. You're working for me. I'm paying you to work. And that's another thing. We want more dough. <laughs> well, you certainly picked the right time to ask me. You're getting plenty now. Why do you want more money? We want to get a room tonight. <laughs> <laughs> now, listen, will you cut that out? A fine team of writers I've got. I've been looking for you all week. Where were you? Palm Springs. <laughs> You're not supposed to be in Palm Springs. You're supposed to be here with me. Come on, Jack. We're waiting for you. Mary, I'll be there in a minute. Now, look, fellas. Hey, who's a dame? Who's... That's Mary Livingston. And she's not a dame. You've met her at least 400 times. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's the girl we write for, Harry. You're Harry. I'm Sam. <laughs> Jack Benny, I'm glad to know you. <laughs> now, look, fellas, we're on the air, so I'm going out and do the best I can. Meanwhile, you stay right here and prepare some kind of a play for us. Yeah, okay. Hey, hey, how about a murder mystery? A murder mystery? Hey, you know, where a guy comes home and he finds his wife in the arms of another man, the husband says, No, I got you. Why, Julius, what are you doing here? You know what I'm doing here. I didn't go to Scranton at all. Julius! Julius, put down that gun! Oh, oh boy, no. boy. Bang, 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 well, you, you got it, Sam. I gave it to you yesterday. No, I give it back to you. Yeah, but after that, I put it in your Here, pocket. use my pencil. <laughs> <laughs> For heaven's sake, use my pencil. Just get started. Now, go to work. Darn those guys. They go to Palm Springs, and I have no broadcast. What's the matter, Jack? You having trouble with your writers again? Yeah, Don, every week they're getting lazier. Now tonight, no material at all. Well, why don't you fire them? He can't. They dug up a photograph of Jack when he was in the third grade. <laughs> well, what's wrong with that? He was the only kid with a mustache. <laughs> it was just fuzz. You could hardly see it. <laughs> anyway, that picture has nothing to do with my writers. If this ever happens again, I will fire them. Jack, if there's no script, what do we do now? We'll just have to stall. Say, Bob, how about a number from the boys in the band? Okay, but I'll need a couple of minutes to round them up. Oh, for heaven's sake, what's the matter with those fellas? The minute the introduction is over, they always disappear. Well, they don't have to play again unless Dennis sings a song and they get kind of restless sitting around on the bandstand. Oh, that's too bad. <laughs> I want them on the stage throughout the show. Where are they? Well, some of them are at that little bar across the street. Well, and Bagby and Fletch and Kurtz, Bridwell and Sammy the drummer are backstage in a, in a gin game. Five of them? How can five play gin? Oh, Sammy doesn't play. They use his head to keep score on. <laughs> they use his head to keep score? Yeah, after a long game, it looks like he's got hair. 
<laughs> Bob, I hate to be a spoiled sport, but I wish you'd get the boys back on the stage. It is a shame, Bob. Look. Frankie Remy's the only one on the stand. That's right. And you know why? Because Frankie takes an interest in the show. He's the only one of the whole bunch who's loyal and dependable and always on the job. Well, I'll wake him up and uh, tell him that. <laughs> He's asleep? But his eyes are open. Oh, Jack, don't tell me that trick of his has you fooled, too. <laughs> what trick? He's got pupils painted on his eyelids. <laughs> Gee, he must have taken a lot of trouble with them. They're bloodshot and everything. <laughs> but, kid, this isn't solving our problem. What can we do to fill time till the script is ready? Well, Jack, you ought to be able to do something. After all, you're the star of the show. But, Don, it's not that easy. I don't sing, I don't dance, I've never done imitations. Gee, I don't know what to do now. If it wasn't Sunday, you could take your money to the bank. <laughs> Funny, Miss Livingstone. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Oh, hi, Dan. Hello. Hey, what's everyone standing around for? Because we got a problem, Dennis. My writers let me down this week. We got no script, no jokes, nothing. What's the difference? Who listens? <laughs> hey, wait a minute, Dennis. There are still millions of people listening to radio. It's still a big medium. More radios were sold this year than ever before. And anyone who's on a big show like this is still doing a very important job. Boy, did you sing a different tune when you cut my salary last September. I didn't cut your salary. You're still getting $80 a week like you did last year. Yeah, but what about that new clause you added? What new clause? The one that says a week is 14 days. <laughs> Jack, how could you actually make Dennis sign a contract that has 14 days in a week? Because when he's around, it seems that long. <laughs> Now, look, Dennis, as long as we're stuck without a script, how about doing your song now? Hey, I got a better idea. Why don't you and I ad-lib a little? You know, to and fro. Ad-lib, huh? To and fro. All right, Dennis, I'll start it. Who was that lady I saw you with last night? That was no saw. That was a battle axe. <laughs> Some ad-libbing. You Come in. Telegrams, Mr. Benny. Right here, fella. Thanks. Give him a tip, Jack. Oh, yes. Here you are, buddy. Say, you're rather old for a messenger boy, aren't you? You ain't gonna get the mumps anymore yourself, bub. <laughs> and I had to give him a 50-cent tip. You gave him a dime. I gave him a quarter. I know what I gave him. <laughs> I wonder who this telegram's from. Oh, it's from Fred Allen. She haven't heard from him in a long time. Dear Jack, I've been listening to your show and have a suggestion that may help you fill remaining 20 minutes. Why not announce your retirement and let the audience take it from there? <laughs> what a silly suggestion. Yeah, they'd applaud right through Amos and Andy. <laughs> Never mind, I'm going out and see how my writers are coming along. If they're stalling, believe me. Fellas, I know it's a good title for a murder mystery, but where's the play? Well, we got a lot of ideas, but we couldn't write them down. Why not? I gave you a pencil. Yeah, but there ain't no lead in it, say. <laughs> oh, there ain't no lead in it. Give me that pencil. Look, fellas, you turn this little knob here and out comes the lead. It's an automatic pencil. Oh, yeah. Hey, look, Sam, you turn this knob and the lead comes out. <laughs> hey, that's good. Let me turn it. No, I want to turn it. Come on, just one. I've turned it already. <laughs> well, give me back the pencil. Here's a pen. You don't have to turn it or anything. Now, please write that mystery play, will you, fellas? Okay. Boy, if I ever get my hands on that picture, I'll fire them so fast they won't know what hit them. <laughs> well, Don, it'll be a few more minutes yet. What do we do? I don't know what to talk about. Well, you're such a great comedian. Why don't you ad-lib something? Well, you're right. I will. You know, folks, a funny thing happened to me on the way to the studio. A panhandler came over to me and asked me for a quarter. 
He said he hadn't had a bite in two weeks. So you bit him. So I... <laughs> Barry, I'm supposed to do the ad-libbing. That's the oldest joke in the world. All right, all right. Hey, Jack, as long as we're waiting for the script, how about the sportsman doing a number? The sportsman quartet, they have anything prepared? I'll ask him. Say, fellas, would you like to do your arrangement for Jack? Hmm. A swell. They said no. They did not! <laughs> now, go ahead, fellas. Now, hold it a second. Hello? Hello, Mr. Benny, this is Rochester. I'm having a lot of trouble here. What is it? Well, boss, I've been rearranging those antiques on the living room mantel, and I was wondering about that yellow vase. Oh, keep that in the middle, Rochester. I'm very proud of that vase. You are? Yeah, there are only two vases like that in the entire world. And the only ones who have them are the king of Siam and me. Or is it the king and I? It's the king and the junk man. I just busted yours. <laughs> Silly rocks. I'm having enough trouble without you aggravating me. What's the matter? Well, my writers are late with the script, and I'm standing here with nothing to do. Too bad I'm not there. Well, what could you do? Sing, boss, sing. You sing with that voice? Don't knock it. Around Central Avenue, I'm known as that sentimental fellow with the mellow bellow. <laughs> hmm. I even sang once with the whole Johnson choir. What happened? Johnson threw me out in the hall. <laughs> I thought so. Well, I'll talk to you later. So long, Rochester. Goodbye. Now, go ahead, Don. Have the sportsmen do their number. I'm going in the other room and see how Hemingway and Steinbeck are doing. <laughs> okay. Get it, fellas. Me, me, and, and, my, my, shadow, shadow. Me, me and, and my, my shadow. shadow. Strolling down the avenue Me, me and my, my shadow Not a soul to tell our troubles to And when it's twelve o'clock We climb the stairs We never knock For nobody's there just me, me and my, my shadow All alone and feeling blue me, Just you and me and my love I'm proud that I'm a lucky from old Kentucky Strolling down the avenue Wherever you go, that's where I glow Me and, me and my love LS. Dash MFT. It's the friend I tell my troubles to. I turn your troubles into smoke rings. The favorite cigarette. Wherever you go is Lucky Strike. It's toasted, you know. For me, me and my, my sh shadow. No, there is just one smoke we love. What kind of writers are, are you anyway? Look at this page. That word is murderer, not moiterer. Well, a gangster would say moiterer. Well, I'm not a gangster. I'm supposed to be a police captain in this. Read your own script. Now, fellas, it's time for our play, so I'll take what you've got, and you bring the rest in as soon as you can. Now, give me those pages. Please give me those pages. <laughs> All right, please give me those pages. Now, concentrate, will you, fellas? Fine thing. Drama on the installment plan. Well, how's it look, Jack? We gonna do a play tonight? Yeah, but we'll have to do it without a rehearsal. Here are your parts, kids. Now, let's see. I'm going to be Captain O'Benny of police headquarters. And Dennis, you'll be my assistant, Sergeant O'Day. Oh, thanks. Oh, welcome. 
Now, Mary, you're going to be the widow, Mrs. J. Malcolm Smith. The widow? Yes. Your husband has been killed, leaving you $3 million, an estate in Santa Barbara, and a yacht. And you're all broken up. Why? Does a yacht leak? <laughs> no, you loved your husband. Now, let's see. Oh, Bob, you'll be the family chauffeur, and Don, you're going to be the bugler. Bugler? Oh, they must mean butler, some writer. <laughs> Boy, what writers I've got. You're the butler, Don. Well, so much for casting. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for our feature attraction this evening, we present an original mystery drama entitled The Murder of Malcolm Smith, or He Had an Appointment with the Dentist in the Afternoon, but He Was Drilled in the Morning. <laughs> It's not such a bad title I think I'll get the boys a room tonight <laughs> Well, let's go, fellas The opening scene is the office of Detective Captain O'Benny At police headquarters Curtain Music <laughs> Wait a minute, Bob Wait a minute, wait a minute is this the theme music for a murder mystery? Mighty like a rose? Well, it's what your writers gave me. Hmm. Maybe that's the name of the murderer. Who, Rose? No, Mighty. <laughs> Be quiet. Well, okay, Bob, play what they gave you. Start it again, will you? Hey, Sergeant O'Day. Sergeant O'Day. Answer the burglar alarm at the First National Bank? Yes, sir. Well, were there any suspicious characters around? No, the furniture movers told me they hadn't seen anybody. Furniture movers? Yeah, the two fellas with the safe. <laughs> Those were the burglars. What's the matter with you, anyway? I'll take it. Hello, police headquarters. Hello, this is Mrs. J. Malcolm Smith talking. Yes? My husband, J. Malcolm Smith, wealthy stockbroker of New York, Palm Beach, Miami, heir to the millions left by his father, has been killed. That's shocking news, Mrs. Smith. Are you sure your husband is dead? Definitely. <laughs> we'll be there in five minutes. Goodbye. What's up, chef? Uh, uh chef? <laughs> That's the way they wrote it. <laughs> J. Malcolm Stock, the Smith broker, has been murdered. They can't even type straight. <laughs> Hand me my gun. Shall I take the bayonet off? Of course. I only use it to roast marshmallows. <laughs> also, take that accent off. Now, let's get going. This is an important case, Sergeant O'Day, and we're going to find the murderer of J. Malcolm Smith... Or, or... Or what? Or nothing. We're all out of script. <laughs> hey, fellas, hurry up with the rest of this, will you? Play something, Bob. <laughs> Fine writer. They couldn't even finish a sentence. Hold it, Bob. Hey, uh, here's a few more pages, Jack. Fine, now go back and get to work. We got a union, you know. We're going out to eat. Not until you finish the script. Okay, blue eyes. Even my writers noticed them. <laughs> now, let's see. Oh, yes. This is an important case, Sergeant O'Day, and we're going to find the murder of J. Malcolm Smith, or my name ain't Captain O'Benny. I could have thought of that myself. <laughs> let's go. Wait till we get in the car. Stupid sound man. <laughs> All right, get in, O'Day. I'll drive. <laughs> Here 
Here we are, O'Day. Come on, come on, open the door. This is the police. Open up or we'll break it down. Come on, O'Day, let's smash that door. Good evening, gentlemen. Did you ring? Where's Mrs. Smith? In the library. Whom shall I announce? The king and the junk man. Oh, be quiet. Here she is now. Pardon me. Are you Mrs. J. Malcolm Smith? Yes, Captain. Tell me, what do you know about the murder of your husband? Well, we were sitting here in the library listening to the radio when all of a sudden I turned around and there was my husband on the floor with five bullet holes in him. You're lying. Here's a body, and he was only shot one, two, three, four times. Now count them. <laughs> no. I want the truth. You killed your husband, and I know why. You murdered your husband because... Oh, fine, we're stuck again. <laughs> All right, Bob. This is embarrassing. Hold it, Bob, hold it. All right, boys, some more pages. Hey, you Speedy. Thanks. <laughs> Let's see here. Oh, yes. Now, listen, Mrs. Smith. You murdered your husband because there's another man in the case. Now, tell me, who's your lover? Who is he? Well, uh, what's going on here? Hello, darling. Who are these men? They're detectives, darling. Aha, the other man. What's your name? My card, sir. Hmm. Darling Crosby. <laughs> What's your connection with this family? I'm the chauffeur. I see. How'd you get along with Mr. Smith? Don't answer him, dear. Dear, eh? That's my middle name. <laughs> hmm, are you taking everything down, Sergeant O'Day? Yeah, honey. <laughs> That's my middle name. <laughs> now, where was I? Oh, yes, now you. You still haven't told me how you got along with Mr. Smith. Well, frankly, sir, we didn't get along very well. You didn't, eh? He's been very suspicious of Mrs. Smith and me ever since she hired me for her chauffeur. Well, what made him suspicious? She didn't have a car. <laughs> I thought so. Now, one of you two is responsible for the murder of J. Malcolm Smith. Yeah, but which one? You can't arrest both of us. Don't get smart with me. I know who the murderer is. It's... It's... Oh, for Pete's sake. <laughs> hey, fella. Fella. What do you want? What do I want? I want the finish of the play. I want to know who the murderer is. Oh, that's what we're arguing about. Arguing? Yeah, I say it's the dame. And I say it's got to be the chauffeur. But, fella... Sam, how can you be so stupid? Look at the motives. The motives. The dame had all the motives. Motives. <laughs> so you learned a new word. I still say it's a chauffeur. But if he didn't have any motives... You motor... keep out of there. <laughs> that settles it. I'm going home. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's alarming to think that a destructive fire starts every minute of the day and night. There's no end in sight for the terrible destruction caused by these fires unless we do something about it. Here's what you can do. Check all the electrical equipment in your home. Make certain it is safe. Don't smoke in bed. Be sure that every match, every cigarette is out before you retire for the night. Don't give fire a place to start. Thank you. Jack will be back in just a minute. But first, here's the sweetheart of Lucky Strike, Miss Dorothy Collins. If you want a bed to keep from your cigarettes, Lucky Strike is the brand to get. It's toasted to give you the best taste. Yet it's the toasted, toasted cigarettes. They take fine tobacco. It's light tobacco. It's mild tobacco, too. And it's toasted. Yes, it's toasted. Cause the toasting brings the flavor right through So to get a better taste from your cigarettes Lucky Strike is the brand to get It's toasted to give you the best taste Yet it's the toasted 
smoking cigarettes. Friends, that song gives you the big reason why so many millions of smokers always ask for Lucky Strike. A Lucky tastes better. It's toasted to taste better. The better taste of Lucky Strike begins with fine tobacco. Why, sure, L-S-M-F-T, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. But there's even more to it than that. Just before it's made into Lucky Strike cigarettes, that fine tobacco is toasted. The famous Lucky Strike process, it's toasted, tones up Lucky's mild, naturally good-tasting tobacco to make it taste even better, cleaner, fresher, smoother. That's the Lucky Strike story, pure and simple, and why you'll enjoy them. A Lucky tastes better because it's the cigarette of fine tobacco, and it's toasted to taste better. So get a carton of better-tasting Lucky Strike. Who's there? It's me, Rochester. Boy, what a day. Our writers didn't have a script for me. The show was crazy. All the orcs could play was Mighty Like a Rose. And on top of all that, I tipped a telegraph boy a quarter, and he turned around and insulted me. I feel awful. Boss, look in the mirror. Huh? Look in the mirror. Well, I'll be darned. I've got the mumps. <laughs> Good night, folks. The Jack Benny program is written by Sam Perrin, Milt Josephsberg, George Balzer, John Tackerberry, Al Gordon, Hal Goldman, and produced and transcribed by Hilliard Marks. Filter smokers, here's the true tobacco taste you've been looking for. Filter tip Tariton gives you all the full, rich flavor of Tariton's famous quality tobacco. And real filtration, too. Filter tip Tariton incorporates activated charcoal, renowned for its unusual powers of selective filtration and used far and wide to purify the air we breathe, the water and beverages we drink. Look for the red, white, and blue stripes on the package. They identify filter tip Tariton, the best in filtered smoking. The Jack Benny program is brought to you by the American Tobacco Company, America's leading manufacturer of cigarettes.